When I was first getting into astrophotography, uh, this is the telescope and mount that I was using. This is called an alt-as mount, and I rapidly realized that it's not the proper tool for astrophotography. Uh, the reason why is, the, is because of the way it moves. It actually moves the telescope left and right and up and down, but the stars don't move that way. They kind of move in an arc overhead. As a result, in order to track the stars, the telescope has to move in sort of a stair-step pattern. Uh, since this is not a fluid movement, it results in stars that are blurry. The solution for this is to invest in an equatorial mount, but uh, you may recall from one of my previous videos that those are very expensive. I ultimately ended up spending about $1,600 for mine, and that's a lot of money for a teacher like me. So I was looking for a way to do the same thing that an equatorial mount does, but for less money, and I stumbled across a device called a wedge. Now Celestron makes a wedge for this telescope, but it costs like $300, which was still a lot of money. So I decided to see if I could make my own. So what I came up with is this, and it actually works really well. It's just made out of some plywood and some other parts, and it cost me about $30 to put together. So I'm gonna show you how it works and give you some tips on how to make your own if you wanna give it a shot. I'm Mr. Wilson, welcome to class. The idea behind how this works is since we're tracking on a target that's moving like diagonally across the sky, instead of moving left and then up, what we want to do is tilt the whole telescope to that same angle so that we can use just one motor to just move in that one direction. That will result in a much smoother movement and should eliminate that blurring that we were talking about before. So the wedge allows us to achieve that angle. We adjust this plate on the front to the same angle as Polaris, uh, and then we mount the entire telescope at, a, at that goofy angle hanging off of this, and that allows us to track smoothly through the sky. On the bottom of the wedge is a piece of plywood that's mounted to a Lazy Susan. Uh, the purpose of this is that once the wedge is mounted on the base of the tripod, it needs to be, uh, you need to be able to adjust it. These bolts are the ones that uh, normally attach to the bottom of the telescope. So what we need to do is drill some holes in the bottom of the wedge that correspond with these. Now that's a little easier said than done. Uh, how I do that is, uh, remove these little spring-loaded bolts. There's just a little clamp that you can pull out and then the entire thing pops out. Once the bolt is removed, you can put your piece of plywood on top and then either use a pencil or a little punch and um, mark on the wood where those holes are. If you're lucky, then they'll line up when you drill them out. I purchased some threaded inserts to put into the wood. If you just try to screw directly into the wood, that will only work a few times. Eventually the, the wood will give out. So some metallic threaded inserts, they screw into those holes and then they provide you machined threads that these bolts can then screw right into. So once you've got that bottom piece uh, built, then you can mount a Lazy Susan on top of it. I'd never used a Lazy Susan before, so figuring out how exactly to screw this in was um, a little tricky. Uh, the, the Lazy Susan basically has a upper flange and a lower flange, and you have to get a screw in through one and then another screw in the opposite direction through there. Obviously, there's not enough space to get a screwdriver in. The solution to that is to mount the Lazy Susan to the top piece first. Um, without the bottom piece in there, it's very easy to get those screws in. And then to uh, drive the screws in through that bottom piece, what I did was drill a hole in the, uh, the top piece so that I could put the screw in and just screw it in from the top like that. Uh, the purpose of this threaded rod here is uh, when you loosen these, these side handles, you can make very fine adjustments to your angle by turning this and it will very slowly push um, the angled piece up. Uh, likewise, uh, you can turn it the opposite direction and the weight of the telescope will push it back down. These thumb screws here uh, attach to the telescope. So when you mount the, so you mount the base of the telescope to this plate 
and then just uh, turn those thumb screws from the other side. To prevent me from losing the thumb screws, I got some of the same little clips that the tripod base has um, and just stuck them right on there and that, that does a good job of holding them in place. I also drew some little pencil outlines uh, to help me line the telescope base up because it's actually kind of tricky to get the telescope on here because it's at such a crazy angle. So any extra little help that you can get to get it lined up properly on the first attempt goes a long way. There's also a little semicircle here. Once I get the telescope mounted, I put my laser pointer on that little semicircle and that helps me line the base up roughly with Polaris. I'll show you how that works later. On the side, you have some knobs. You can loosen those and it allows you to adjust the angle. Um, getting this cut uh, to line up properly was a little tricky. The way I did that was uh, without the bolt in here, um, I just drilled a hole through this little wooden piece. I have these little pointy, uh, metal things that the idea is you put them inside of a, a hole and then that little point will make a mark on whatever you press against it and that way your hole is uh, sure to line up. In this case it wasn't a hole I was after but rather that curve so I just put this inside of the hole and then moved it up and down and allowed that point to scratch an arc into the side piece. Once I had that arc carved in the side piece, I used my router with a straight bit and a plunge base and just plunged it in a little bit and followed the arc along and then plunged it in a little bit more and just sort of slowly uh, dug it out. The only other um, part worth noting here is that there are a couple of knobs on the uh, bottom piece as well. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the purpose of this is that the Lazy Susan will allow you to make um, side to side adjustments. Well, once you get it adjusted, you don't want it moving. So you can tighten these knobs and sort of lock it in place. If we look closely at how these knobs work, you can see that there's a little rubber stopper in here so that as you adjust the knob, um, that rubber stopper is sort of stuck to a, a bolt and it presses up against the bottom. And since there's two of them, that actually does a pretty good job of uh, holding the whole thing in place. A couple other little finishing details. I hogged out this little recessed area for the threaded rod with a Dremel bit. Uh, and did sort of the, the same sort of thing here. I had a little cone shape and it worked well for hogging out that little recess. There's nothing magical about that. It's just a little place that uh, fits that nut. Uh, it is worth noting that your um, your dowel here does need to be able to, to move a little bit because as this comes down or goes up, that angle is going to change a little bit. So the way we did that, um, just a single screw on this side and a single screw on that side and neither one of those screws is, is uh, screwed in especially tight, just tight enough to hold it in place but still allow it to rock back and forth. The last thing is that I've got a couple of eye hooks on here and that's actually for a counterweight. Uh, I'll show you how that works and why I added it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the whole thing together and show you how all the pieces fit. Let's start with the base, attach that. Now I'll attach the mount, line it up with my little pencil marks, and thread in those thumb screws. You want to make sure that your um, angle adjustment knobs are good and tight so that it doesn't start rocking and rolling on you when you're putting your telescope on. And that is the next step. Let's thread on the telescope. So this is what it's uh, supposed to look like when you got it all put together. I had mentioned that I added these eye hooks so that I could add a counterweight. Uh, the reason for this is I used a half inch uh, plywood for this base. And I think that if I had used a three quarter inch plywood, it would have uh, 
taken out a little bit of the bounce so the, the wood does have a little bit of a play to it. So what I noticed is that if I added some counterweights on this side, that sort of uh, dampens that movement. So as the uh, telescope is slewing, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't bounce around as much. So the way that works is I just have uh, some steel cable with some um, carabiners on there and I just clip that on like that. And uh, I actually just use some, some weightlifting dumbbells and they have the little circle in there. I just thread those weights on there and then clip it on here. And those, that extra weight pulling down on the cable uh, gives it a, that extra support. Now, once everything's all hooked up, uh, it's time to actually configure it. So what I do is I take my uh, laser and I've got a little uh, pencil mark where I need to put the laser. I put it on here and um, shine it up. Right now the telescope's in the way. I'd have to slew the telescope out of, out of the way here. But I shoot the laser up. It's one of those green astronomy grade lasers so you can very clearly see the beam. And I just roughly adjust the whole thing, move the tripod and everything else until that laser is pretty close to pointing at Polaris. Now that's a very rough adjustment, far too rough for astronomical standards. So once you get it roughly there, there are actually some menu options that you can step through in the uh, telescope's hand controller to get it really dialed in. Now the way this works is that uh, you tell it the time and your date and your location and all the other stuff that you always do. But when you tell it that you're ready to do the polar alignment, what it does is it will uh, point to a star. So if you are pointed properly at Polaris, then uh, given your location and the time of day and stuff, then it should already know where all the stars are. So it will slew to where that star should be. And then what you have to do is center that star in the eyepiece, but you don't use the hand controller. That's where you make your adjustments here. So you, to go left and right, you rotate it on its Lazy Susan. And to go up and down, you adjust that threaded rod to make the entire base go up and down. You have to loosen these, these thumb screws here. So once you get the star centered in the eyepiece uh, mechanically by moving the entire wedge around, then that's when you're actually polar aligned and ready to start taking pictures. So I had mentioned that this device actually, even though it's homemade and not like super scientific uh, ultra precision, it actually still works really well. I'm shocked at how good some of my early uh, photographs were coming out. Um, ultimately, I decided that I was hooked on astrophotography and I wanted to go all in and I made the jump to invest in a proper equatorial mount. But it was this wedge that helped me decide that I wanted to pursue this as a hobby uh, because I could see that my pictures were coming out so much better with uh, the proper equipment that I decided to make the investment for the ultimate in proper equipment technology. So if you uh, would like to try something like this out, it's not too hard to put together. Um, good luck and clear skies.